dear students uh, today we are going to discuss the cooling and heating of greenhouse in lecture number 7 uh, we have discussed about the planning and design of greenhouse and you know that the uh, in india uh, if you see the uh, why there is need of cooling basically if you are cultivating inside the greenhouse we, re we required suitable temperature right temperature is one of the apart from temperature other parameters is also required but the here today we are going uh, talking about the low temperature means the, if the temperature is high then we required cooling means the temperature inside the greenhouse is not uh, suitable then we have to do the cooling and temperature inside the greenhouse is low then we have to do the heating so uh, basically why there is need of cooling if you see in india normally if you will compare with the european country where the temperature minimum temperature is very low means the in other country uh, in, in in some parts of world the minimum temperature uh, goes below zero means in 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 minus and the highest temperature is around between 25 to 30 degree during even during summer season but in india condition is totally different even if in 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 winter the if you see the 90% of india the minimum temperatures go between 5 to 10 degree right but the highest temperature go above the 40 degree c see so in that case uh, in major part of india during especially during summer season required cooling of the greenhouse you can see that why uh, why there is need of cooling because you know in earlier classes already we have discussed that in greenhouse automatically due to the greenhouse effect and due to your confinement effect the temperature inside the greenhouse is always more than your uh, outside temperature and it depends upon your size and, and and so many factor what will be inside temperature so but during winter it is beneficial because due to greenhouse effect the temperature inside the greenhouse increases so it is beneficial for cultivation of crop during rainy season you work as a rain shelter apart from that Uh, in 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 rainy season also sometimes the temperature shoot ups but the major problem occurs during your summer season Be basically as i told during summer season normally if you talk if you are talking about the jharkhand the normal tem summer temperature go varies between 35 to maximum temperature i am talking during summer 35 to 42 43 and so due to that the inside temperatures go very high so one by one today so there are various system so uh, i have classified the greenhouse cooling system first one is the ventilation second one is the evaporative cooling third is the heat prevention and fourth is a composite system so one by one we will discuss about the various cooling system that people are using and we can you can use for cooling up the greenhouse basically in ventilation this is the very common one you can you have seen in your house also on top of your Uh, 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 in your house, on um, there is a top window is there, and th there are two types. Of this. There is one, one is the natural, another is in force. There is the fan system is there. So this system is suitable. Uh, the ventilation system, either natural or or, or you can say the force during the uh, winter or spring or fall. But it is not very suitable because during for summer season, as I told, during summer that outside temperature is between 35 to 42. suppose that so out inside temperatures go very high inside the greenhouse so this is natural ventilation and the, in natural ventilation two effects are there one is the your buoyancy effect and second is the wind effect what is buoyancy effect due to the uh, because uh, as i told due to greenhouse effect and confinement effect inside temperature of the air uh, inside temperature of air is higher than the open field in the uh, uh, outside the greenhouse so due to that the due to air become lighter density decreases and it go upward right so due to that and and outside temperature outside temperature is uh, is, is the air has the uh, uh, lower temperature so density is is, is 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 high so due to that the buoyancy effect occurs and based on your design of your ventilation for uh, ventilation part given in the greenhouse normally air moves from the uh, side to on top you have seen in the different greenhouse on top you have given the ventilation uh, i will show the picture and in second case the buoyancy because the wind effect is important suppose that if the, there is no wind in that case only your buoyancy effect will due to density difference uh, 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 due to density uh, difference the cooling will happen so normally at any time the two effects occurs buoyancy effect and wind effect based on the who, who uh, which is the more predominant and overall cooling up a uh, greenhouse uh, uh, happens in natural ventilation so you can see in normally you have seen on the top on the side there the ventilation is there normally here insect net is also there 
So due to uh, insect proof net, it, wind speed also very slow because you have to protect from the insect also. And on top there is the vent is there, so from side to top air moves, as I told, based on your wind effect and your buoyancy effect. In force ventilation, uh, normally natural ventilation is not very effective, but natural means you can say passive system. There is no, you are not using any energy to uh, uh, cool the greenhouse, but in force ventilation you are using the, because whenever the, uh, the, your wind speed is very low, so effectiveness of your ventilation system is not, uh, the, effect, the, uh, the natural ventilation system is not very effective. So you have seen your house also and different uh, auditorium and different places. On top of your uh, auditorium, uh, any uh, earlier older house, you can see the ventilation is given and there we used to give the fan so basically we are giving the fan that fan is uh, using the exhaust fan you have given and that is sucking the air and that so in this case uh, so uh, even though wind speed is low it is more effective than your natural ventilation but the problem is that energy consumption so you have to think about the how much energy it consumes if you're using the force ventilation and the second uh, cooling system is the evaporative cooling system normally you have seen the water cooler you are using in your house for during summer season especially during summer season to re reduce the temperature of your uh, our house so basically here how it happens uh, it uh, uh, it works on the principle of conversion of sensible heat into latent heat means the the outside temperature has a drivable weight valve and when the what happens here if you pass the air through your pad so one one side the pad is there, another side fan is there. So fan sucks the air through the pad and water is passed through your uh, pad. And due to that, uh, what happens here, the sensible heat of air that is going through your pad, it reduces the, uh, due to, because air is passing through the pad and water is there. So uh, air and water mixing is, happens there. And due to that, the sensible heat of air that is coming, it, it converted into latent heat. And due to that, water is, water, uh, Due to that, the temperature of the basically the means the suppose the outside temp, drive temperature is 40 degree and it passes through the, your pad, so temperature reduces to 35. So, the 40 to 35 means the 5 degree temperature drop happens. So, that sensible heat is converted into latent heat and that uh, evaporates the water. And during that, the, your enthalpy you can see this is a psychometric chart, the, this is the inth constant enthalpy line. So, uh, this process occurs uh, along the, your uh, enthalpy line, constant enthalpy line. And same system already I explained, that is the fat pen system. You can see that the left, in left picture, you can see the pad is there and in right, the fan is there. Okay, already I explained. So it reduces the temperature and the, apart from that uh, re reduction in temperature, it also increases the relative humidity because uh, uh, your water go into the air, depending upon the what is the condition of air, air means the what is the actual condition of relative humidity of actual air means outside air, that is uh, uh, means the uh, you can say relative humidity or dry bulb, wet bulb temperature. So, uh, whenever we are using evaporative cooling, we are interested to know what is the efficiency of the cooling system, right? And it depends upon you what is the, means the, what is the temperature difference between your dry well and wet well. Because you, you can see that the, in Rachi, your evaporative cooling system, uh, 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 the performance of evaporative cooling is much better than the Delhi. Or you can say Ramgarh Hajaribad, if you're talking about the Jharkhand or Dhanbad or Jantretpur, because the, here air is dry. Due to that, the air has more capacity to take the moisture. Uh, if, if the air is more saturated, so means the more saturated means the dry bulb wet bulb temperature is uh, difference between dry bulb wet bulb is, is less. So when the dry bulb temperature difference is more, so its effectiveness of evaporative cooling will be more. So you can see the uh, saturation efficiency. In denominator, you can see dry bulb in and dry bulb uh, wet bulb in. Means the what is the temperature? Suppose that uh, outside temperature dry bulb is 40 degree and 32 degree is the your uh, wet bulb temperature. So 8 degree is the your denominator and top you can see when the air pass through the your uh, uh, pad, what is the temperature drop? Means the dry bulb temperature of out. Means the when the air pass through the your pad, what means the it, when the air is coming, it has dry bulb wet bulb temperature, that air that is coming, and then air goes goes out, it has dry bulb wet bulb temperature, right? So based on that, drive, what is dry bulb in and dry bulb out, you can you can calculate what is the efficiency. Means the, in ideal condition, it should be 100%, but it never happens, right? So it, depending upon the various factor, the efficiency varies, okay? And what is the living air condition based on this formula, you can calculate what is the uh, living air condition, what is the dry bulb temperature of air that is passing through your pad.
and this is the air flow rate you can calculate what is the uh, wha how much air you have to pass means the based on your density of air that is passing through and the uh, in, and the frontal area of cooling area and the velocity of air velocity that is passing through your uh, your cooler you, you will able to calculate what is, what is the air flow mass air flow rate of the uh, required to pass through the, your pad same way you can calculate the cooling capacity if you know the what is drivable in drivable out and you know the uh, specific heat of air and the um, already i discussed what is the ma ma is the air flow rate so if you know the air flow rate you know the specific heat of air and you know the what is drivable in in means drivable uh, uh, drivable temperature of uh, air that is uh, that is going and drivable temperature of the air that is going out so how much cooling you are doing for uh, doing to the air so you, you will able to calculate what is the cooling capacity of your cooler and the, then how much water consumption as i told because it, due, when the air comes its its humidity is low h is your humidity ratio you can also say we used to say humidity also right so uh, humidity uh, so based on uh, this is the amount of water minimum water apart from that the actual water requirement will be more but here what you are calculating how much Wa air is taking water right because when air is going that is dry air and that is passing that is wet air so based on your initial humidity and h2 is the air that is passing through your uh, uh, pad so h2 means after passing through the pad what is the humidity means the outside humidity of uh, your air and inside humidity inside the greenhouse humidity of your your air okay so based on that you will able to calculate what is the water consumption and the fog and misting system it normally if you visited any greenhouse you can you have seen fog normally use the fogging system this also works on the evaporative cooling here the you used to give the small droplets inside the greenhouse with the high pressure nozzles the different types of nozzles are there and you pass the air uh, water through the high pressure and the uh, droplet size is between 2 to 60 um, micrometer and this, this system is less expensive uh, in, in comparison to your evaporative fan pad cooling system. Okay, then the roof evaporative cooling. Here also evaporative cooling principle is there. In all the uh, two cases we have discussed that evaporative cooling. Here also what we are doing, you are, you are basically on the top of greenhouse, you are giving the water, uh, uh, sprinkling the water on the, uh, on the cladding material and due to evaporative cooling, the temperature inside the greenhouse decreases. And the third method is the heat prevention, right? You know that already we have discussed earlier also that the, when the uh, your solar radiation flux is coming inside the greenhouse, there are various parts of your, that solar spectrum, that UV light, visible light, means that we are more interested in photoactive radiation, but there is a near infrared that is between 700 to uh, 2500 nanometer. That is 50% of total energy that is coming. But the plant normally in photosynthesis are more interested about the power. But due to this, uh, because power is near uh, near infrared portion is also going inside the uh, your greenhouse, and that is beneficial during winter season. But during summer, the same because the greenhouse effect and confinement is very beneficial during winter to increase the temperature. But the same phenomena occurs during summer, and that is the problematic, especially for the 90 percent of India. Okay, so uh, here basically uh, what we are doing. Radiative heat load can be eliminated or uh, eliminated or reduced before entering the greenhouse. So there are various methods by using that uh, you can uh, you can cool the basically you are preventing the heat that is to entering the greenhouse. That one is the suppose that you know that at any place if light is coming the, uh, the various factor happens like the it, it may be absorbed by the cladding material may be uh, reflected by your transmission. It depends three things: transmission, absorption, and reflection. So based on the uh, based on your different cladding material, which type of material you are using, uh, three phenomena occurs. So first is in shading, shading is the very common one. In shading also there are various ways there, like the whitening of roof, uh, I will explain later on. The whitening of roof you can do, external shade cloth, you can use the external shade cloth on the top of the greenhouse, right? On top of the greenhouse or on the surface of the cladding material or inside the greenhouse. As you know that already I told that whenever the light energy comes the three things are, happens so based on your types of your uh, material you, you are using in each case the inside temperature and phenomena will be different okay so uh, and you know that basically in uh, whenever whenever we are using shading you are we, we are we are not rejecting reflecting basically some part is reflected but the what happens apart from the uh, said it, it reduces the power also 
okay it, it it as i told that near infrared portion is more important during summer if if we'll remove the near infrared portion the temperature inside the greenhouse will be more less severe means that there will no in that case the temperature rise will not very high okay but in case of shading what happens it apart from the reflection and absorb due to reflection absorption and transmission it also affect your photoactive active radiation part because it, it, it do not reject okay so you have to think that whenever you using different shading uh, technology to reduce the temperature you have to think about the the important part that is photoactive radiation uh, photoactive radiation part because that is very important for your biological or photosynthesis activity of or uh, of the crop so uh, as i told that whenever we can use at different location application of external shading compounds so uh, as i told that the, the you can use the shade cloth different cloths use shade cloth on the top of the greenhouse uh, above the top above the greenhouse on the surface of the greenhouse inside the greenhouse apart from that different uh, paint material is there uh, okay used to put on the top of the greenhouse you can see here we are using the external shading compounds okay you can see that the, here you are using external uh, external shading compounds you are giving normally you give the uh, calcium hydroxide you can see uh, uh, calcium hydroxide you use okay um, you can say the uh, if you uh, or sometime you give the paint that is washable paint right during summer you will put the you know if the calcium hydroxide so it color is white due to that you know that on when the light energy comes on the surface white body so it is reflect due to that we used to wear white cloth during summer season okay due to reflection now in, in ideally it should be 100% reflected but as i told that if temperature will reduce but what about the light because light is also important oh, how much light the plant you are getting okay and that it affects the your uh, your uh, after suppose that in during summer after that if the rainy season is coming it is washed out during rainy season but it affect the transmission property of your cladding material so you have to look, in, look into the all those factors so this is the uh, uh, you are spraying the uh, 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 paint on the top of the greenhouse and it it it, uh, it reduces the temperature apart from that as i told shading screen can be put uh, outside on top of greenhouse in left picture you can see in lower left picture and inside the inside the greenhouse you also use the shading screen okay but the problem with the uh, is is that the when you are using the inside the shade screen normally use the thermal screen because that have, that is very useful during rainy season uh, during winter because it, uh, it 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 blocks the far infrared to go outside the greenhouse so it it, it maintain the temperature during night time but what happens when you are putting the your shade net material inside uh, already your light energy is going inside the greenhouse so it is not very effective right uh, and as i told that we have to think of not in only about the temperature because during summer temperature is not only issue we have to think about because during summer season light intensity outside is very also high okay so we have apart from the temperature during summer season you have to also think about the how to uh, reduce the light inside the greenhouse okay and the third uh, second one is the radiation filter for radiation filters basically you are using uh, basically filtering out the means the you are not uh, allowing the near infrared to go inside the your uh, inside the your greenhouse okay so uh, here the two types are there near infrared reflecting film cover and the fluid roof cover the first one uh, how it works infrared additive normally during the during your uh, manufacturing of cladding material you used to uh, during day what you require during day basically during summer season or you are interested to remove your near infrared portion between 700 to 3000 nanometer basically if you remove during day time so temperature inside will be not very high in comparison to normal film so what we are interested in, during during the manufacturing of your cladding material you use the chemicals that will block the passage of your near infrared portion right but during night in the same film inside the film means the multi layer film is there so okay. so inside layer of the film your cladding material greenhouse film you use the uh, such material that will block the far infrared to go outside because during daytime it is okay but during night you want to maintain your uh, inside temperature okay so different types of uh, infrared additive is added during the manufacturing of your greenhouse so this is the basic principle of the you can see from this picture 
what is doing? It is absorbing or reflecting. So basically, near infrared is rejected by applying the absorption, reflection, or interference. Basically, during the during the manufacturing of the uh, cladding material, you use some such chemicals that will uh, that will that will that will not allow the near in infrared portion to go inside the greenhouse. So you can see the picture. It reduces the air temperature inside the greenhouse and automatically your uh, plant temperature will also re reduce because in the, in the photosynthesis and in the your physiological activity biological activity you are more interested about the leaf temperature not about the air temperature okay already i explained so in birsai culture city here uh, in our pcm scheme already i explained earlier also you are working on the this is low cost natural vented greenhouse with the near infrared reflecting film cover we have used uh, and uh, this year we have started the study on with this is the smart you can say that this is the advanced film so we are testing the effectiveness of near infrared film in reducing the temperature inside the greenhouse during summer season and apart from that as i told fruit cover uh, you normally use here uh, there are different way people people have used the water and apart from that the the uh, copper sulfate, uh, 1.5 to 2 percent copper sulfate solution in the water, you flow through the hollow channel. You can see this through hollow channel, you can see from the picture, you pass the uh, your uh, calcium uh, copper sulfate and water mix solution. And it same way like the uh, near uh, infrared reflective film, here also it absorb the uh, uh, absorb the near infrared portion. Okay, so basically, you are interested during daytime, we are interested to reduce the. Uh, amount that is uh, near infrared portion that is going inside the greenhouse and this is the composite system the fourth one in cooling the first one is the earth to air heat exchanger and second is the aquifer coupled cavity flow heat exchanger system so one by one we will discuss the both the system in earth to air heat exchanger system basically this is very important to uh, re remember the same system used for cooling and heating also okay the same system means the composite system is not only used for cooling it is also used for heating of the greenhouse during your winter season not winter season whenever the air inside temperature is low than the required temperature for the cultivation of desired crop you are doing inside the greenhouse so you have to do the heating also right so as i told that composite system means the both the system is used both for cooling and heating so first we'll discuss about the how you is uh, art to air heat exchanger system so normally uh, how it happens, it, it basically you can see from here that you can earth to air heat exchanger, earth air heat exchanger, air to soil heat exchanger, earth canals, different names. Th this technique, this system is not only used for your cooling up, you know, this, this type of system people are using for cooling up your house also, cooling up the big structure, right? Uh, the uh, big offices people are using the same system how it is happening so basically during uh, during uh, during summer what happens your air temp your air temperature is supposed that is 40 degree right and the soil temperature uh, uh, if you go uh, uh, if you if you if you see what you are doing you are pass you are passing the pipe uh, uh, through the i uh, will show the picture later on you can see here this is the pipe so basically the hot air is passing through this pipe and going through your two to four meter this go up to two to four meter and the pipe go inside the greenhouse so what happens the hot air is passing through this pipe and due to because the soil temperature uh, at the two to four meter is between 20 depend it depends a range is given 26 to 28 and air temperature is 40 degrees so what happens your air lose the air, your, because air temperature is 40 degree and the soil temperature is 20. So this is the heat exchanger means the at one side be, due to your uh, soil is uh, at lower temperature, air is high temperature, air lose the temperature, air lose the temperature and soil is heated heated up and then lower temperature air go go inside the, your greenhouse. Okay, and same vice versa. In winter, what happens? Uh, uh, in winter the air temperature is low means suppose that air temperature is 5 degree it goes through the same pipe but the your soil temperature is between uh, 25 to 28 in winter because at the uh, uh, 2 to 4 meter the soil temperature you can say more or less constant so uh, during winter what happens it takes the 
heat from the soil. In, in summer, it loses the soil energy to the soil, but during winter, vice versa. Means it takes the energy from soil and heat up the air. Okay. So and, and this is the variation of your uh, temperature with the soil depth. You can see and different arrangement: closed loop and open. In open loop, the first one picture on top one is the open loop. Means the the pipe is uh, the air you are taking from the outside. But in closed loop, you can see the. You are taking air from the inside, and then again, so this is the closed loop system, and the, uh, this is the efficiency of your uh, performance of uh, efficiency of your RT heat exchanger. You can see that the means the what is the temperature of air that is going inside, and TS is the soil temperature. Means the maximum temperature that can be reduced. Suppose that the air temperature is 40 degrees, soil temperature is 25. So maximum temperature drop you can you can achieve in this is the 15 degrees Celsius. Difference between the air that is going inside and the soil temperature. Suppose that 40 and 25. So 15 degrees. Right, so maximum, but the in actual it is not 100% efficient. So uh, and T T zero L is the actual air temperature inside the your greenhouse. So how much temperature? So by this we are able, able to calculate the the performance of our heat exchanger. Okay, and the same way coefficient of performance means the whenever because you are passing the air through, so a lot of energy means the using pump to pass the air through the so using. Uh, energy is consumed so w is the total power required to pass the uh, to run the system and q is the, the how much uh, temperature during suppose that we are talking about the summer how much energy it, it has lost right energy it has lost when air has lost the temperature so q by w you able to calculate the coefficient of performance of your rt heat exchanger same way in aquifer coupled cavity heat flow exchanger system the the water temperature inside the your aquifer is the around 20 this is not the constant but suppose that it is 24 degree and high temperature air, air you, you are passing so same way like the earth tv exchange same principle here again during during summer what happens during uh, if you want to reduce the temperature the air will lose the temperature and air will lose the temperature and that cold air will go inside the same way like the RT heat exchanger same principle is used here so basically if you see normally you can uh, it, it it is reported that the whenever the temperature outside is more than 30 degree right more than 30 degree without fan cad fan fad you cannot reduce the temperature to make the structure suitable for cultivation. So summer is the major problem. Due to that reason, people are using eight to nine months. During summer, what people are um, already, uh, uh, um, uh, earlier, uh, in earlier lecture already I explained, what you are using, multi-purpose greenhouse. So you are taking the benefit of uh, high temperature for uh, drying of the any crop. Uh, a culture commodity. Apart from that, we have designed the detachable roof greenhouse to, to, uh, for summer season. Detachable roof greenhouse means for round the air cultivation without using any energy. Normally, if you see in India, people are using eight to nine months because during summer it is very difficult. Technology is there. High tech, low cost, medium, already I explained in earlier lecture. Technology is there to make the any temperature microclimate inside the greenhouse. But the issue is the, your, your cost, economics. Which crop you will take? What is the market you are thinking? So cost of running the system, one is the construction part, that is the fixed cost, and second is the operating cost. So operating cost is very high. Normally people are not evaporative. Ev 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 Normally in India, you will see the people are using the natural ventilation, thermal screen. In Basically you should use thermal screen, but people are using shade net. That is wrong. Okay. Apart from that, people are using the fogger or a fogger uh, or misting system to reduce the temperature. But these are the, even though you are using these three combinations, this is not very effective during summer. So people what they are doing, they are using this, they are only cultivating for eight to nine months. I, uh, okay, so that is the major challenge in India. So basically in India we are more interested in to make the greenhouse suitable for round the year, we have to think that uh, how to reduce the temperature. and. Suppose that if any, anyone is taking crop during only summer, okay, he is interested. There is no, no need for greenhouse. So basically the greenhouse concept is totally misunderstood I, I, as I feel. Because in India you, you don't need cool, uh, heating of the greenhouse. Because the greenhouse technology is for heating the air, right, to reduce increasing temperature. But in most part of India, the heating uh, high temperature is not equal. Because apart from that, if you're using the soil, using the plastic mulching, that also increases temperature. So you have to think in detail that, so this is very interesting that uh, you have to think that due to that reason, people are using the greenhouse for eight to nine months and taking only one crop. And the, the, normally they use the cultivation, uh, start cultivation after summer season. So when the, they get the crop, the price is not very lucrative. So your, uh, you can say the co economics of cult greenhouse cultivation, based on your location, it varies. 
location, market, there are so many factors. So we have to think that what is the next. So normally you have designed the data 10 types of net. Suppose that someone is interested, so that our 10 types of net structure, I have already discussed earlier also, that, that is more effective than your greenhouse doing summer season, okay? And then greenhouse heating, here the two system is there, passive already we have discussed. In passive we are not using outside energy uh, to run the system and in active system is there. In passive the four system is there, uh, one by one, passive, passive and active system we will discuss. Uh, why there is need of greenhouse? You know that the whenever you are based on your outside temperature, suppose that outside temperature is minus 5, so inside temperature is very low. So normally in general, if you think that the, we require temperature inside greenhouse between 10 to 30, suppose that for any crop, and if, if the outside temperature is minus 5, certainly the inside temperature will not more than 10, it will less than 10, okay, due to greenhouse and confinement effect. So in that condition, based on your crop, which crop you are cultivating, there is a need of greenhouse. And it depends upon the, your, what is outside temperature, right? Apart from that, uh, that is important, then what are the, why the temperature inside, uh, 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 because in daytime it is very beneficial, because in daytime if the sunlight is sufficient, inside temperatures go. But what happens during, during, during night time is the major challenge, because during night time the temperature, because you are not getting sunlight, so there is no greenhouse effect, right? Confinement effect is there. So there are three processes, conduction, infiltration loss or radiation loss. Conduction, you know what is conduction loss? Uh, because from in, in, any structure due to the you know, uh, temperature difference in inside outer, because inside temperature is, uh, outside temperature is low, suppose that it is, is minus five, inside temperature is five degree. So due to that, the your, uh, your uh, due to conduction, the energy you lost through, throughout the, all the different surfaces of the greenhouse, right? Apart from that radiation, if anybody at a absolute temperature, that it, it, it is lose energy by radiation. And leakage, because it, even though we try our best to make it airtight, but the, there is some leakage inside the, so due to that infiltration loss is there. And controlling the heat loss, there are people are using different methods, because heating cost is very high. So people, people have used that, two layer of the film and if because air has a low thermal conductivity okay so due to that the uh, the uh, inside temperature means the daytime energy is preserved for the night time okay so uh, controlling the heat loss is more important okay and reducing the heat loss if you reduce the heat loss so heating cost will be less and the as I told, the four system is a water storage system. It is clear from this picture that what, what you are using, basically in daytime, the system absorb and trap the incident solution during day, right? And water is put inside the greenhouse. So during daytime, the due to solar, solar light is coming, so water will be heated. And you can see from the picture, the water temperature at the daytime is less than the air temperature, right? So inside temperature is higher than the your water temperature, so air, your water will be heated due to solar radiation. And in night time, what happens? Night temperature, inside temperature is low, so and water temperature is high, so it will, due to convection and both radiation, your water will lose energy and so greenhouse air will be heated. This is the basic principle. Basically, in daytime, it absorbs the energy and night time, it release the energy. Same principle latent heat storage material has been used like calcium chloride and different materials are there. So it also absorb the energy during daytime and it releases during night. Same way the uh, rock bed you are using the rock bed, I mean the gravel you are using and that is heated during daytime and it releases energy during night time and that increases the temperature inside the air. Same thing is the north wall storage. So these are the passive system here. The passive system he told in all the passive system same principle is used and the in daytime we 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 store the energy in night time it releases the energy to hit the inside temperature and what is heating needs means the how much uh, energy is required means means the how much energy is required to heat your greenhouse so it is i think in 12 uh, you, you have learned about the uh, uh, the basic equation of uh, heat transfer that is u a t i minus t 0 t i is the inside temperature meaning inside temperature we are willing to maintain inside and t o is the outside temperature u is the overall heat transfer coefficient and a is the exposed area through that uh, your uh, your greenhouse lose the energy. So based on that, you will able to calculate. But here we are not using, uh, taking into account the leakage. So various equations is there. This is simplest one to know the how much uh, 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 heating need is required. Okay, and there are two types of heating system. Normally, broadly, you can classify. One is the local heating system. Okay, and second one is the central heating system. In and 
before uh, going further, first we should discuss what is the function of greenhouse gasing, heating. So there are the four processes, conversion of fuel to heat energy. Means that you are using different, different types of fuel to heat the air, right? So uh, though means that your uh, fuel will be converted to energy and that will heat the air. And the same heated air will pass through the different parts of your greenhouse and that heated air will transfer energy to your, your plant, air and soil, right? And conversion of heat energy into the usual heat by the plant, right? So there are four steps in the heating of greenhouses there. And the, the simplest one is unit heater. Normally in winter you use heater in our house, right? So electrical, electrical heater, what? So that, that is unit heaters, okay? So various types of unit, unit heaters are there, various types of fuels you can use in unit heaters, okay? And the, you can see the two types is there because you are, when you are, depending upon which type of fuel you are, you are burning. So first thing is that we have to heat the air and distribute the air inside the greenhouse, okay? So in unit heater, the two types is there, vented and unvented. In vented types, what happens? The, the exhaust air means the exhaust of the combustion gases go outside the greenhouse and in un unvented, the means the your exhaust of the uh, because we are when we are burning the fuel the exhaust will be also there right so in unvented the exhaust where will go uh, will not go in an outside the greenhouse and reason for uh, using unit heater because these are the very simple less uh, expensive in comparison to your central because these are used for a smaller greenhouse right and for the for the small uh, time period if you required then you can use the uh, unit type unit heater types of greenhouse. These are the various, you can, you, you, at various location, depending upon the uh, height, height of greenhouse, you can put on the ground, you, you can, we can hang it out. And the, as I told that uh, the air is heated, then you have to distribute. So for that distribution system, you also sometimes use to, so equally distribute the hot air inside the greenhouse. And in central heat, heating system, uh, here you can use the, uh, uh, here the, in, in the, the, Boiler is there, and in there the firebox is there where fuel is burned, right? And then flue, flue gas is like the in already told that the flue gas will be removed, and heat exchanger is there. Means through that the uh, your heated air is passed throughout the greenhouse, basically, right? So uh, you can see that the here the water and steam. Normally we can pass the water, uh, heated water or steam throughout. The, you can see the various uh, that arrangement of heating pipe coils. So we pass the heating coils. If if, if soil heating is required, then we pass through the your bed, right? And different locations so that the heat heat should be in, distributed uniformly throughout the your greenhouse. Okay. So based as I told that the their water or steam system is used. To, uh, uh, to transmit the, uh, because uh, your uh, energy uh, through, uh, throughout the greenhouse. And this is the radiant heat system. Here also again the, uh, red, this is, uh, heater is emitted infrared radiation and air through which the radiation travels is not heated. And the object, because the, like in greenhouse, I, I, you have learned that the heated objects will release the energy. Same principle is used here to heat the greenhouse. And this is the comparison, like as I told that in the central heating system, steam and uh, there are two types, steam types and hot water types. So whenever you're using steam, because for, uh, for cultivating your uh, heating the soil, steam is required, right, for heating the soil. And the, uh, so advantage and disadvantage is discussed here. So because whenever you're using steam, it is more dangerous, so you have to, piping system should be more secure, so you can go through the different advantage. And this, so as I told, the uh, unit heaters, very uh, easy one. So based on requirement uh, for how many months you have to heat, uh, what is the size, what is the fuel cost. Normally people are using, this is very interesting because whenever burning the fuel, CO2 is coming. So in developed country, people are using the exhaust means the flue. From the flue, they are, the, they are removing the CO2 and that passing the CO2 through the greenhouse. Because that will uh, already we have discussed that the CO2 uh, concentration of CO2 is very important up to certain level depending upon your microclimate condition. CO2 also enhance your photosynthesis. So people are using those uh, CO2 uh, from the central heating system to uh, to put inside the greenhouse. And uh, already know that in in India already I explained that the major uh, challenge is not the heating. In in 10% of area you can say in some parts of Kashmir or Himachal 
or Uttarakhand or some part of Northeast, right? The temperatures go below zero. In that area, but, 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 but as for my knowledge, very few people are using heating system. Because suppose that, as I told, technology is there. We have to think that what is economics, right? Where we will sell. Suppose that in, in, in Kasumi temperatures go below minus, uh, below zero. So you can, you can do, because the technology is there for all the, all the things. Okay, but the, if the you can pass, you can you can you, you, you can transport the produce during that season from the your uh, Punjab or Haryana, right? So you have to think that the, if the uh, if the material available in the different lo but in Europe it is very difficult. Throughout the Europe the low temperature is issue. So you have to think the alternative also, right? So uh, as I told that in India heating in some places heating is required, right? But you have to think economics, right? And the various factor before using the heating system. As I told that in India, in conclusion, I can say that high temperature during summer is major for not only high temperature because during summer light intensity is also very high. Okay. So this is all about uh, uh, about today lecture. So if you have any, uh, thank you for your uh, patience. Uh, if you have any question, uh, you can you can mail me or you can contact me my WhatsApp number. Okay, uh, and hope uh, uh, yeah, today uh, uh, today lecture was interesting, and uh, and you have uh, you, you have understand the basic uh, brief uh, basic concept of cooling and heating of greenhouse. Thank you, thank you for your patience.